Hello everybody, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. I am back with another of my Celebrating You interviews and I am thrilled today to be talking to Kim Gatz. She has been, oh goodness, you've been a, a, a presence for a while on Instagram for me and on my channel and now on my Facebook group and I am thrilled to talk with you in person. This is awesome. Kim, yeah. I would like you to introduce yourself to the people, tell a little bit about who you are, your family, where you live, whatever you'd like to share. Uh, okay, my name is Kim. I live in the Seattle area. Uh, I live with my husband, and right now we have um, two children living, quarantining with us, with their ones with his girlfriend and ones with his wife. Um, I have another son and daughter-in-law that are just about five blocks away. And I have a daughter in Yakima, Washington with her family. And so that's, we're all kind of Washingtonians and that's where we are. Sounds like you have a pretty full house these days. It's been a little full. <laughs> I, I have to say though, that my, my one son and his wife are actually living in a 26 foot trailer oh, that they bought a year ago because they want to travel, but they didn't, um, they weren't quite ready job wise to do that but they didn't want to pay rent anymore at a apartment. So they parked it along the side of our house. So they're out there part of the time and they're in the house. I mean, they come yeah. in and use their water and stuff, but, right, but right. they're in, they're here. It's fun That's though. Cool. Yeah. Enjoy it while you can. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think they'll be gone by fall. And I think my youngest son who's here with his girlfriend, she's trying to get into nursing school oh, in wow. New York. So oh, they cool. might be leaving. Yeah, so. that's that's a long way away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a long way. I'm not thinking about that too much. Yeah, I don't blame you. Enjoy what you can while you can. Right? right. So Kim, tell us a little bit about how you got started stitching. You know, I was a newlywed 37 years ago. I had never done any um, needlework or anything. Uh, we had just gotten married and we were getting ready to move cross country to Minnesota from Seattle. And at the time, there was a cross-stitch store at my Northgate Mall. In the middle of the mall, there was a cross-stitch store. And I happened to walk in there, and I bought a little tiny, I'm sure it was a dimensions kit, tiny little kit. And I thought, I can learn how to do this. And so I read the directions, and I did this little tiny sampler. I still have it somewhere in the attic. I'm sure it's in a crate somewhere. Um, and I taught myself how to do it. And I was hooked. I remember working on it on the drive from here to Minnesota in the winter. It was about a four-day drive. And... Um, yeah, uh, from then on, I was hooked. So I, I stitched pretty much all through my kids' childhoods. Um, and then about, I've been work, I went back to work full time 14 years ago. And about two years into that time, I just really couldn't keep stitching. I was on a computer all day at work and uh, coming home and, and doing that close up work was really hard. So I, and plus at that time, my beloved cross stitch store closed down. There were no other ones around. I feel like it was kind of, the craft was kind of waning a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And online shopping hadn't really taken off yet. It was kind of on the cusp. So mm -hmm. I kind of let it go. I saved a lot of my stuff. And then in the middle of that, I learned to knit. And I started knitting about 10 years ago. And that was much easier to do to unwind mm -hmm. after work. And my daughter's a knitter and my daughter's also a cross stitcher. So mm -hmm. we had that in common. And uh, then about two years ago, about well, when did you start doing your floss tube? Um, I started them in early 2017. So I think that spring I was on Instagram. I had already started kind of Alicia Paulson from 2018. I'm sorry, early 2018. Yeah. Alicia Paulson, she has a blog, um, Rosy Little Things. Uh, she's got lots of crafts and stuff. I follow, I followed her blog. And she was putting together cross stitch kits. And I, and one day on Instagram, I saw this kit and I'm like, oh, I haven't cross stitched in 10 years. I, I think I need to, I think I need to do that. But I was kind of hesitant to do it. And then I was watching a knitting YouTube uh, gal and she was getting back into cross stitch. And from her, I found floss tube. And from her, I found you and several other ones. And I'll show you the piece that brought me back to stitching. I've got this right here. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I remember her, you telling me that. That's so it was her pretty. Piece. Um, I have her summer piece, her winter piece hanging in the closet, and I just am this close to finishing the fall piece. Mm -hmm. And I have that down here, too, if you want me to show it. But um, that kind of brought me back in. And then yeah. I started watching all these floss tubes, and I was like, this went on without me. I had no idea that <laughs> I 
have no friends that cross stitch. I don't know anybody in real life, but my daughter that cross stitches. So, so you don't have a store local to you now. I do have one. It's not as local as my old one was, but I found one. Um, it's in Issaquah. It's just up in the little, little town up um, kind of uh, northeast of me. It's a, it takes me about 20 minutes on the back roads to get to her store. She actually, um, it's called Thread Needle Street, and she has been in business as long as um, my old shop. She was in business when my old shop was in business 30 plus years ago, and she is a one-woman show. She doesn't have any employees. Wow. She has her own show. Um, I think she's tried in the past, but you know, as I think it, in this area, there's just not a lot of stitching happening. Right, right. Um, funny story though, one of the early uh, floss tubers I started following was Kindred Stitcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, last, I think it was last summer, my daughter and I, she was visiting me. We went into Threadneedle Street in Issaquah and um, who should walk in but Lisa, oh, Lisa and uh, the gal, her friend, textilist. Yeah, Lori. Lori yeah. Uh huh. And so I kind of met her real quickly oh, on, fun. in the store. And then I don't know what really happened. Last fall, I kind of stopped stitching again. I kind of got back into my knitting. Mm -hmm. I think um, I cannot stitch on much smaller than much finer count than 32. And I have to have my, I have an alt light behind me and a magnifier, even with my bifocals. Um, and so I kind of felt frustrated. I can, I do great on 18 count and I can do 28 count with yeah. the magnifier. But I think I just kind of felt, I don't know what happened. I just kind of lost it. And then right before this whole Corona thing started, I was getting sucked back into it again. I started to see your name appearing again on things yeah. like, oh, okay. yeah. back. <laughs> I don't even really know. I almost felt like maybe knitting is my winter thing and oh, crossing is my spring and summer thing. We'll yep. see what happens in fall. But yeah, I feel yeah. like I've got I've got so many I want to do, so many patterns I want to do. So you can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop. So on a totally different subject, I have to ask you, how close are you to church mouse? The yarn shop church mouse. I am a short little fairy wide fairy ride across the across the town um probably uh it takes me if once you get downtown seattle and find parking or if you walk if you walk on you could walk on the ferry and walk up to the store when you got off the ferry oh wow it's cheaper than taking your car it's about a 20 minute ferry ride and maybe a 10 so minute walk. Visit my son out in bramerton then i'll be able to take the ferry across and walk to church mouse yes awesome <laughs> in fact if you let's see if you're in bramerton because I would take a I would take a different ferry to Bremerton, okay. but um, or you could take the Narrows Bridge and go over and drive up and around. But you would if you wanted to drive from Bremerton to to Church Mouse, you would actually there's a bridge that links okay. that part of the peninsula to um, Bainbridge Island, which is what Rainy um, Church Mouse is on, and then you okay. take the ferry home. Yeah, it's very close. Really, so much to see. So much to see. There is. So tell me, go ahead. We have a lot of yarn stores over there. I know. Of yarn stores. That's what, I, that's what I was thinking when you said there aren't really much st stitchers there. I thought, but there's a lot of knitters. <laughs> a lot of knitters, definitely. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So do you have at this point something that's like your favorite thing to stitch? You know, I, I am really eclectic. Like I, I haven't really, I don't, I haven't really felt like I, I want to get into the reproduction samplers. Those don't really call my name, but I love Linda, um, Brenda Gervais. Gervais, yeah. um, and I like prim type stuff. I do like prim and I'm kind of on a turkey kick right now. I've got um, several turkeys <laughs> in my stitch mania that I'm doing. I like, Lin I like Lindy stitches. Some yeah. of her stuff is just fun. Um, so I, I, I don't really have one set. Um, Put it in front of you and you'll stitch it. Yeah, I, I do like some samplers though. And I was looking at uh, Rosewood Manor She's got a sunflower piece, right, and right. a chrysanthemum piece that are stunning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those, I, my daughter and I were talking about it, and I would love to do a, um, what is it, uh, the uh, hollow. Cockburn hollow? Yes, I would love to do one of those. My daughter and I were talking about maybe doing, each of us starting one of those next January is kind of a big treat, because they're not obviously a very um, cheap project to start. So, not small, not cheap, especially if you want to do it in the silks, because isn't it charted in silk? 
I think so, maybe, but we wouldn't. Yeah. I think we would we wouldn't be able to DMC. Yeah. yeah. But so that kind of, you know, kind of country, but yeah. yeah. But like I just finished, but this is how eclectic I am. Last week I finished my um Barbara Anna. Anna, yeah. And she's quirky. I mean, Barbara Anna's stuff is quirky, but I love some of it a lot. So <laughs> you like animals in clothes, like um, like yeah. um, Gulf yes. Coast, like Julie. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. What else uh, you little goodies there do you have to show us? Well, right now I'm kind of in this thick of um thick of mania, but um I started I I'm just about fu finished with my other Alicia Paulson fall piece, oh, and I don't have it ironed or anything, oh, but. That's pretty. Isn't that just so sweet? So does she sell the kits? Like her she, stuff Okay, kits? she'll start off when she first advertises, she sells the kit. So you get the flosses, if they're always DMC, and you get the fabric and the pattern. But if you don't wanna buy the whole kit, you can buy just the PDF pattern. Okay. And then you can go on, I think she, the fabrics you can always find on one, two, three stitch. They're usually just a linen fabric. Okay. Um, so, um, That's pretty color. Do you remember what the color of that is? It was, I can tell you, I don't remember what it was because I bought her kit that time, okay. but I don't, what I don't like is dealing with this. Oh yeah. So what I usually color? get it for the fabric and the pattern and I give those colored flosses to my daughter. And then she'll buy the pattern and the okay and the fabric and let me see if it says here. I'm sorry, I should have looked at that. Um, okay. she, it was uh, Witchelt milk chocolate. Oh, that's pretty. even. It was a um, 32 count even weave linen, and it was color 95. Okay. And Great. it is, it's a very different color. I don't, I often coffee tea dye, but I've not bought linen this color very often. Very nice. Um, so I have that. And then the other piece that I've really been working on is also one that's part of my mania. And I started this last summer, I mean last mania, sorry. And I didn't get very far because it was just a mania piece. It's the um, bobbing for pumpkins. Oh. Speaking of Brenda Gervais, right? Yes. And um, you must have coffee de tea dyed that one. I did. I really grunged it up. That's nice. And I was a little disappointed because the picture, I'm, you know, I haven't used, a, I have fancy floss and I have, I have a lot, some, but I don't substitute a lot out. I don't, and I will usually look at the pattern and buy fancy floss if I really want it for the bigger chunks of color on a project. But when I bought that pattern on the pattern cover, it looks like the little witch, like it looks like it should be orange, uh, yellow mm -hmm. on her sleeve. But the color is actually, it is the called for color, but it's definitely orange. Definitely orange. So yeah. The second witch on the other side of her that I haven't really started, I picked a different floss. Oh, well, that's so cool. they're gonna have different color sleeves. I just thought, okay. I, <laughs> I wanted more yellow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, those have been my two focal pieces is those two fall. I'm a, I love fall, so yeah. I stitch a lot of fall. Okay, um, do you like Halloween? Halloween to a degree, okay. but more just fall. And then I don't really, I mean, to be honest, I worked a lot on that Barbara Anna piece uh, recently to get that done. And then I did start, um, it was Blue Flower. Is that the name of that? Oh, yeah, with the B and the A. I don't have a good picture, though. I'm sorry. It's on my phone. It's her Halloween squirrel one. And oh, it, I never. Those are so cute. <laughs> I had never seen them until I think her summer one just came out with the yeah. squirrel in the bike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I bought the squirrel one and I just started that one. And I've been working on Lindy Stitch's um, Mr. and Mrs. Delicious. Have you oh, seen those? The turkeys, yep. <laughs> yeah. I worked on those last night. Okay. So my mania plans this year was I went back, I did a little bit of mania last year. I started off pretty strong, but then we traveled um, in the very end of the month for a wedding in Minnesota. And I, I'm not a travel stitcher. I, I need my light yeah. and 
Um, it was, and we were busy. It was a short kind of trip. And then we went right from that trip into taking care of our granddaughters for five days. And there was no time to stitch. And so then it was the end of May, but I went back through my Instagram and for what I did do, I was able to remember what I started when. So right. I picked some of those pieces and I never, I finished some throughout yeah. the year, but I have a lot that I didn't do much with. So I added them back into my mania. Cool. So I have a few new starts for mania this year. And I have some whips that were mania last year. And I have, I think 15 projects. So I'm doing them each oh, wow. twice. Okay. Is, do so you have them there to show us? I do. I have, let's see, my first one, some of them are a little bit iffy here. Well, first of all, is my Lindy stitches. So I'll show the okay. pattern. So I started, trying to glare, and I did not, I only had his little hat done last year. And last night, you can see I got his part of his body oh, done. He has a head and a body. He has a head. Hey. But I tell you, these borders, these little lattice borders uh -huh. are the death of me. <laughs> that uh, one counting. <laughs> I have a hard time with those borders. I may not do the bottom border on this piece. Um, and this then straight line. <laughs> other pieces that I'm working on. Oh, this is another designer that kind of hooked me back in. And it's um, Snowflower Diaries. Oh. And I'm going to start her autumn. Oh, pretty. She uses yeah. um threads they must be a european thread called nina's threads have you heard of those he's another of the independent dyers in hungary yeah yeah but i don't have her thread so i have to use dmc this time yeah, yeah. that's another one of my my new starts oh and this one my daughter and i are starting together on tuesday it's the milk and cream oh yeah the milk and cream company does. they have they live on a big chunk of land they live out in the middle of um Cash uh, fields, okay. agriculture, and they just got a new cow. They oh, had one. They have one baby cow, and then they just got another cow that is pregnant and gonna have a baby in a month. Oh, so I think that always called out to her. Nice. Um, and then I have. This is one of my oldest whips. Oh yay! Um, I'll show you the picture first. It is a shepherd's bush because I was really into shepherd's bush when I ended my time cross stitching. And this pattern is, I believe, dated 1994. It's not a very good picture because their pictures never are. But it's the little, can you see it? Am I doing yeah. okay? Which one is that? Oh, that's the Christmas one. Yeah. yeah, it's the little girl. And I'll show you where I got on it before I quit. Oh, nice. So I have not worked on this probably in 15 years or 12 wow. years. I have a board. You don't have much to do, though. I have the border. <laughs> the darn border. I don't like borders. I mean, I like how they look, but I hate stitching them. So she came back out for my, um, from, one, from one of my manias. I thought, I need to get her done. I think yeah. she'll be cute. I don't. The interesting thing, my daughter and I were just talking, I, I love Christmas. My birthday is in December. I have a lot of Christmas decorations. I put them up the day after Thanksgiving. I don't have a lot of Christmas stitching and I'm not drawn to a lot of Christmas huh. stitching. I think because I already have so many decorations. Right. I don't know how to fit it all in. And, and I just love fall so much more and I find more fall patterns. So right. I, but yeah. I would like to get my shepherd's bush done. This pattern was also a mania start although the start didn't happen <laughs> it was out of the primitive what is that magazine um country. Going primitive stitcher yes somebody i saw just made a pillow out of the turkey one time i saw it on floss tube so i bought the magazine and i'm just going to do the turkey to make a pillow my goal is to have i got a dough bowl for christmas last year okay I want, I want a bowl full of turkeys. <laughs> so there's that. And this is another one that was kind of, a, I started it the first year I got back into stitching and I don't know if I can show it without showing the graph. It was another snowflower diary. Okay. And it is Halloween. Oh, it's a little girl with the frog hat. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not, 
too terribly far on it. I think I made a mistake on it and I quit working on it after a while. Uh oh, I've got a mess going here. Now I know what you guys mean. You know, <laughs> Uh, I lost my dad for her. I have basically her head done. Okay. And I have her body in her. Yeah. And she'll just be a pillow. You know, I think the other thing I felt like is I don't want to just frame everything. Right. I don't want right. a lot of wall space. So I'm, I try to pick smaller projects. Right. Um, and do some of that. And then I have some very primitive. These were um, Shelly, uh, Shelly Allen, primitive stitching. And they were supposed to be starts last mania, but I didn't get them started. It was at the end of the month. But there's several of these just that's little um, primitive little girls that I'll do some pillows for. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and they're easy, quick. I needed to right. find some easy, quick things too. Yeah. Uh, oh, and this was another one, another turkey. <laughs> that was a start last year. You're gonna have a turkey bowl. I am. It's very tiny. It's a. Oh. Look how cute. It's like a little stamp. It is. And if you see the, <laughs> if you can see my outline, this is really how big it is. Oh, wow. So You'll be there that in no time. I, wow. I was like, why did I not do this throughout the year? I don't know why. You I didn't do this. like a bunch of those and have them all in between your bigger turkeys. Little there turkeys and big turkeys. <laughs> yes, that's it. This was another, um, I think this was out of the Halloween, you know, that. You know that magazine that has the Christmas ornaments and the like new house? Yeah, yeah. It was, it's kind of flimsy here, let me show you. It's this funny little girl. Okay. Holding the cat, that's cute. Yeah, and I started off very, I think I have enough, I think I pulled a, a Priscilla and Chelsea on this one. I started two projects on one piece of oh. fabric. <laughs> so, I think I started that turkey that I showed you. All right. There. And then over here, last year, I managed to get a star done. A star done. Woohoo! <laughs> that little girl. So that didn't get very far. <laughs> well, and that's kind of what happens with mania. <laughs> then, then I got on the, I jumped on the bandwagon. I do like Curry Schooler. Okay. I, I'm, I didn't at first, but I'm kind of falling in love with them. Certain ones. Some of them are a little drab, and I definitely yeah. think I need to get better at picking colors. See, that's, I like a lot of them, but I would have to totally brighten up the colors. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was a year ago, a year ago Christmas that Misty Purcell started her button up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I started it and I haven't worked on it probably since I don't even know how long it probably, I probably worked on it that, that winter and then put it away. And I so, love it on that fabric. And I dyed that. And I, I started it on a brown and I thought, no, when it snows here, it's very gray. Yeah, that's and, pretty. I dyed it and kind of grunged it up, but I got, there's nine squares. Yeah. I one. And those are some pretty heavy stitching in some of those squares. <laughs> they are. Yeah. And I'm doing it, I'm doing it on 28 over two. So it's a little bit yeah. harder, longer. Yeah. Um, but I, I saw, she brought hers out not too long ago and was working on it. And I actually had put it on my, um, Amy Loves Togues has that, she's been, I found it through her, but it's Jessie Marie does stuff. The whip go, they're doing the whip right. go. I put that on my whip go. So I actually put it in my mania too. Yeah. And then I think that is all of my manias. I think now that's those are your all. What about new starts? Did you show us new, your new? Milk and cream, your... milk and cream, gobble, oh, gobble, oh, gobble, gob. I didn't, didn't show you that. Oh, found another one. This is a whip from last year. I basically got her head done, her hat done, I mean. Another Barbara Anna, oh, right. Right. Now, two of my three granddaughters are very redheads. Oh. And I saw somebody on Instagram do this picture, and I thought, I have to do that. But I literally got this done. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little ways to go. A little and then, bit. This was my sunflower, my squirrel one. I don't have a good picture to show you. Okay. And I did show you Lindy Stitches. Yep. That wasn't really new. And then, oh, my gobble gob. I don't have it here. I think I showed it already. Um, which was the stackable turkeys was my new start. Oh, right, right. The Plum Street one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I really, like when I looked at that button up in the, in the prairie schooler, I, during this quarantine time, 
when I'm sitting at work, my work slowed way down for a while. It's picking back up again, but my, I work for a pediatric therapy center and we had to scramble to go virtual and do telehealth. Yeah. And so yeah. while I waited for our therapists and our admin to get all up to speed, my work, I, I do fall, I do support it dwindled down. So I did do a little bit of retail therapy while I was at work <laughs> and I bought, I think I bought, but twice a week I placed orders on Misty's website for fabrics. Awesome. I maybe I bought her out. I don't know, but I love her fabric and I, I'm, it's like, I don't want to use it. It's too pretty to use. Yeah. Uh, but I've also been buying some prairie schoolers. I would love to do seasonal ones, have a winter, summer, spring, fall, one of theirs. Yeah, they're, they're seasonal ones I love. I think I have all of them, but yeah, someday, <laughs> someday. I know, and I, and I don't want them big. That's the other thing I have to figure out. I, I, need yeah. to do color. I saw actually somebody did their July one. And you know, the, the month ones have like words and then the picture usually. Yeah. And they only did the picture and I think they only did part of the picture. So it made it much smaller, much more manageable. And it was just, just a pretty little piece. Just, yeah. You know. So that's something to think about. Right. They yeah. are adaptable. They seem pretty adaptable. Yeah. Um, so Kim, like, is there anything whenever you're, now that you're back to stitching more, do you find that like in these crazy times that either the stitching or the knitting that you're finding it to be something that's grounding you, something that's calming you, something that, uh, like, I find that I can forget about all of this and mm -hmm. just focus on what's yeah. here. And I need that. <laughs> uh, I do think that. And I think also because um, from working from home now, uh, if I want to take my, when I take my lunch break, my, my, I sit in this chair and my light is behind me. It's right there. I don't have to go sit in my, we didn't really have a break room. So I would sit in my car and cross stitch. Oh, wow. But I had to have an easy piece to do that on. And I cut, just kind of stopped doing that, but it's been really nice in the middle of the day to sit down and take a stitching break. Um, and in the evenings, this is going to sound really crazy, but I, because of the, of the dynamics in our house right now, um, we, Carrie and I actually have been in this room. This is kind of our den and it's kind of been a several different things in this house. And before the pandemic hit, we actually had put two brand new computer desks in. He has a side job that he's doing that he's learning. And then all of a sudden it was great because we both have two screens, but we have wing backs in here and we've kind of been hibernating in this room in the evenings. Um, our kids are in the other room using we have a TV mounted on the wall. You can't see it, but um, my light's right here. And I, it's so much easier to cross stitch. I don't have to drag everything out. It's just all out. Right, um, right. And it is really nice to just yeah. um, concentrate on something different. And I, it's been hard to make myself go to bed some nights because um, I'll start watching TV and I'll be cross stitching and it's just relaxing. And yeah. my, I have to tell you, I start, we have Hulu plus uh, we have Hulu. Um, on our streaming, and I realized that Mary Tyler Moore, the whole series. Oh, is, are they showing it? And I've been watching Mary Tyler Moore oh, on my weekend nights. Yeah, they're like a half hour long. Yeah, yeah. They just roll right one right into another, and I thought, you know, I watched it as a young girl, but I didn't really get all of it. I you understand know, understand a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. So that's been my my easy listening TV, um, and we've also been watching the Marvel movies in right. the chronological order. So we do that if Carrie and I are together. He goes to bed before I do most nights. So yeah. I do find it is much easier for me to stitch because I'm home more. And I yeah. think that's yeah. helped. Yeah. I was starting to kind of feel like I was being pulled back into it. Um, I was bringing stuff back out. I never had put it all away. It was just in a closet. Um, and I just was starting to really miss it again before we went into lockdown. And um, that's been nice timing, yeah. Yeah. It's well, been, I am glad that you did. And like I said, I was so happy to see your name starting to appear on different things. It's like, oh, Kim liked that post. She's stitching again. <laughs> I think, you know, also last year was just a rough year. I mean, I think everybody thought 2019 was tough. Little did we know. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, I didn't, I didn't stay involved in some social media. I've joined a few Facebook groups for stitching now that I had never done. Um, Whipgo um, and 
and what's the other one I was doing? Um, the 24 hour cross stitch group I joined. And I thought, I don't have a lot of in real person community, but technology makes it so much easier, you know. Well, if you and your daughter start a floss tube channel, you'll have all kinds of community. You know what? I have to tell you something. She, she, she registered us for a floss tube last night. Did she? She did. Awesome. We were here at home. And um, so what's your name? Well, this is the, okay. So she was, we were trying to find a name. We were joking around. We've been joking about it for a year. Yeah. But exactly. Zoom, a year ago, we knew nothing about Zoom, right? I mean, nobody had heard of Zoom. She had kind of heard about it. She had sent me an invitation. I never did anything with it. We didn't do it. Um, and in the summer and spring, I could actually drive over there and do some in-person ones, but we would have to do a remote one. But now we all know how to do Zoom. So we were talking about it last week and we were trying to think of some names. And so last night she, uh, I was, we were playing a board game with all of our kids. We were having a game night and I was getting text messages from her and she says, mom, what do you, th and I hadn't, we hadn't really said we were going to do it, but she's really more really gung ho about it. She said, let's name it stitch and stuff. And, and I, I instantly loved it because my, my lovely legal bookstore that I went to that closed, the owner of that store was named Edna and she had a beautiful store and it was there for many, many years before she died. She died from ALS and she died quite quickly. And I just have such happy memories of being down in that store. My daughter remembers being down there. My daughter was stitching. She made me a beautiful cross stitch picture when she was about 10 years old. She was, um, and had somebody help her frame it. It's a snowman picture. Um, so I, she registered, I mean, we have that name now on YouTube, but we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> uh, well, that's the, that's the step. Yeah. And you know, her daughters, my granddaughters cross stitch. All three of them do. They're and 10. How old are they? 10. One just turned nine and one just turned seven. That's awesome. Yeah. So they knit and they stitch. And we'll probably be cross stitch and some knitting because we both do knit. Yeah. That's awesome. I, she cross stitches more than she knits, I think, a lot of the time. Yeah. She finds it. She can take it anywhere. She can sit outside with her stitching. She's much yeah. more versatile. And she has, um, they live on a big property that used to be a farm and the owner, previous owners had kind of subdivided it out, but they're all on the same driveway. So it's them on the front end of the property. And then down the driveway is one of the original owners in their home. And next down the driveway farther is their daughter and family. And then down the far driveway farther is another family, another work um, family that they're they're all in a ministry that supports Native Americans in oh, Yakima, cool. wow. and so they're all kind of quarantined together. Yeah. And my daughter um, actually got the one one daughter of the original owners was a cross stitcher, but had stopped for many years. They started uh, she started stitching again before oh, wow. the pandemic, but now much more. Yeah. And the other gal down the driveway, I think, just decided to learn and oh, they get together I think once a week in one of the hay barns in their lawn chairs six feet apart and their cup of coffee and they um cross stitch and so awesome yeah yeah I, I knew that Lacey was stitching but I found out today that Tolly was teaching herself and she's actually trying to design her own little piece already for her niece or something for a bookmarker yeah so um great uh, she's she, she can take her stitching way more than I can take mine yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah, I, we would love to, it would be fun, especially yeah. because she's got those two, but really she lives in a very rural area. Yeah. She lives very far from town. Um, they're very secluded where they live, so. Yeah. yeah, and that's just it. You don't, I don't think you really understand. The words I want to say is what you're getting into when you start a floss tube, and in a good way. Yeah. As, I mean, the community is just amazing. And of course, you already know so many people going into it that they'll kind of, you know, they'll, they'll support you out of the barn, you know? It seems like a really supportive. It really it, is. There's drama going on that I don't know about, and that's fine. I don't need to know about it. I don't know about it either, if there is. <laughs> that's good to hear, because the, we're, we're, we're no drama llamas at our house. You know, <laughs> We have enough negativity in this world right now. The last thing we need is any drama in our cross stitch. 
You're so right. In fact, I was thinking I would go back. I think it was Michelle Bendy that was compiling all the Be Well um, patterns that people were right. I need to go back and look at for some of those because I did Barbara Anna's and yeah. um, there were some other ones I remember liking. I just need to yeah, get them. There were, there were so many of them. Which was so sweet of yeah. people to do. Yeah. yeah. And some of them were small, but like that Barbara Anna, that's a big, that's a big that's piece. A lot, yeah, that's a lot to design to mm -hmm. put out there for free. And she, yeah. she has a second piece too. Um, it was a fox and it was the light. I think it's called light and it's carrying a lantern on a pole. Um, oh, cool. that she this also. one that you did is called the key, right? Yeah. 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 And shortly after, like a week after that one came out, I think the, the fox one came out and it's gorgeous too. That's awesome. Yeah. So and, you know, and originally I thought when I started stitching too, I thought, well, you know, I can do some smaller pieces and I have a nice desk area at my work mm -hmm. corner. I have a wraparound desk. I've got wall space. I've got a shelf. I thought I'll just put some cross stitch at my desk. And I have done that some seasonal stuff, but um, again, I think I might not be ever going back to my office. I think we were already looking at doing some downsizing, not downsizing, but consolidating of resources and um, cause I can do it all remotely. So right. I'll just have to decorate my little desk area at home now. Decorate away. And you have a wall back there that looks like it needs some yeah, stuff on it. Yeah, there's not much there. Yeah, this room, there's something high up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I do have room. I just, I don't know. I have never paid anybody to frame a piece. Have you ever had a piece? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Or oh, Harbor yeah. Haven. Harbor Haven was, was done by a professional framer here. The fractals, well, the, the mushrooms that I did for my boys and the fracto I did from, through a frame shop here. So, yeah. yeah. And, and many more before that. Right. I've done some myself too, but. Yeah. I actually had another piece down here that I didn't show because I haven't really started it. it. So my daughter-in-law and son that live about 10 blocks away are expecting their first child. So I'm going to be a grandma again. And um, Barb, um, Alicia Paulson that did the, my fall scene um, she has an ABC sampler. It was one of her early kits. Yeah. Um, and I have the pattern for it. And I think I'm going to do this little sampler for them. And yeah. I think if I do that as a baby gift, I would try to get it professionally framed. Yeah, because there are some things, like the, the special ones, I think it's worth the, the, the money to get it professionally framed. I looked at those Harbor Havens again. I was like, they are gorgeous. But there is no way I would ever get one of those. Stitching. <laughs> it's a lot of stitching. It but a lot. Something about like the little village scenes that just get me every time. <laughs> they're so cute. And I think the same way about the Hawk Run Hollow ones. That mm -hmm. There's a lot of detail in those. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if I end up doing one of those. It would be, no matter how small you do them, they're going to be big. I they're think. still going to be big. Yeah. 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 And you know, you could pick and choose and maybe only do some of them, you know? Yeah figure out which ones you like the most. <laughs> I was going to tell you one more thing. I, this is so crazy. I was following a bunny trail through YouTube. I was looking for something and somebody mentioned Vana. Look, look at Vana's YouTube for something. And I went to her channel and you know how sometimes old videos pop up to the top. And so I didn't realize the video I clicked on was almost four years old from her. Yeah. But she talked about how she stitches because I feel like over the years, my stitching has changed. I was a much neater stitcher when I was younger and my eyes were better. But I feel like sometimes when I've been stitching the last couple of years, my stitches don't lay real nice. My threads are twisting a lot. Um, and I watched, I just happened to watch her video on how she stitches. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I decided to try this. So what she has is on a stand. I just, hoop. I can't, so I can't, I have to have it taught. Right, right. But she stabs down with the point of her needle and comes back up with the eye of the needle. Yeah, yeah, I did that for a while. And you know what? I started it this last week and I can tell a difference. Interesting. In how my stitches are lined. I thought, well, but I think it's because I'm not twisting. I, whatever yeah, I'm doing you don't now. have that down, the whole way down and then turning the needle. Yeah. Around. That's very true. I'm not getting as many knots because I felt like when I started stitching again, I'm like, I don't remember getting all these knots yeah. when I to stitch. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but anyway, I thought, wow, it was, I had never heard of that method before. My daughter had never heard of it before. I was trying to railroad, you know, mm -hmm. that's way too time consuming. Yeah. You really have to think about it. I have found that, um, of course, you know, the sewing method is slightly different, but one other thing to keep an eye on is 
whenever you're ready to put your needle back down into the, into the fabric, you'll see that your strands have a curve to them. And uh -huh. I kind of, I don't, it's hard to explain. I have a video showing it, but I kind of follow that curve around so that when I put the needle down, the threads have more of a tendency to just lay flat. Oh, I'll have to look and at that. I, I mean, I get twisted stitches sometimes, but for the most part, yeah. because I'm very aware of, of what my what my threads, you know, I can see what the two strands are doing and they have a tendency to do this. So I just kind of make sure oh. when I'm putting the needle back down that I'm kind of following. I'll have to look at your video on that. I don't yeah, think it's correct. I have a playlist called Tutorials. So if you look in there, it's one of the ones in there and it might actually be it might be one of the ones that's labeled, that's titled sewing method. Sure. I talk about that. Yeah. So. I tried, I tried to do sewing method when I started watching you and watching Priscilla and Chelsea, but I think I'm one of those old dogs doesn't learn new tricks. I just, yeah. and it's yeah, not I, for everybody. Yeah. I found it. I just felt clumsy doing it, but yeah. it clearly works for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I also, um, Somebody asked the other day on, I think it was on Instagram, if you, no, I think it was on one of the Facebook groups. Do you start your pieces in the center or on the corner? And I started thinking about it. And when I started cross-stitching, I just had a little dimensions kit that told you what to do. And it had you starting in the middle. So I always did the middle. But mm -hmm. since returning to stitching, I now love to do it in the corner because you're automatically working down because I like to work down. Yeah, yeah. And you also can kind of conserve your fabric a little bit better. That's right. That's right. You have a better idea of how much you're using, where you need to be, as long as you start in the right place. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> yeah. I caught myself the other day. I was, I was getting ready to start a piece and I usually give myself a three inch border all the way around and I only had done an inch and a half. Yeah. And I put the first couple stitches in and I thought, man, this is really close to the edge of my fabric. What's going on? And then I realized, well, yeah, and you know, that shades of gold piece, that fabric is so pretty. I totally m messed up on the calculation of it, of it so that, because I thought I had barely enough fabric for it. So uh -huh. I only left like an inch and a half because I thought I need to make sure I have enough fabric. Yeah, oh I yeah. Put it up in the upper left corner. You know, I have the whole, whole length of it done and I have like this much left on the other side and I'm just, I'm so mad at myself. I, like I said, I totally miscalculated because I would like to have more of that gorgeous fabric showing when I frame it, but I can't because I only have that much of a... <laughs> yeah, that piece is just stunning. And I, I was telling my daughter about that piece because I know I had started, I told you I started, I bought that friendship sampler. Mm -hmm. That you were good, that you started. Seasons of friendship, yeah. And I never started it, and I think because it bugged me that it didn't line up, that there was that break. I just couldn't get, I can't get past that. Yeah, so yeah. This beautiful blue linen um, that I bought for it that I think Shades of Gold might fit on, and I'm waiting for Mrs. Sadis to get really up and running. I think she did have a, I looked the other day, she, has, she had a, a skein of, what she call it? I can't remember it, but it was a gold and rusts, and I think it would be beautiful on the blue fabric. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like it would be perfect. Yeah. 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 I'm trying just, to think what, which one she has that's gold and rust. She has one called Supernova, but it's more of peaches and oranges. Yeah, and that one was a little bit too bright. Let me see. Yeah. Um, it was too bright, but I, I did find one, and I don't know if it's one of her normal ones or... She didn't have, you know, a ton in her shop yet, but. No, she's being very conservative with what she puts out at this point, which is a good thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've been through it, right? Yeah, they have. What's the last name? S it's S-E-D-A-S. Yes, there we go. I was just going to look real quick, tell you if I could see which one it was, because it was gorgeous. And it was called, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, no. that's not the one I'm using yet. I, I'm in no hurry because I, yeah. I, I clearly have plenty to work on. You have mania to get through. I do. And I think this year we have no travel plans, so it should not interrupt me. Yeah. Yep. yep. And I should have a lot of really cool pieces by the end of the year if I keep right. on. Yeah. Although there's always more I want to start. Right. Isn't that funny how that works? Everybody's so <laughs> enabling. It's so enabling. I was on Lindy Stitches. I watched her yesterday and she released her new 
bird have you do you watch her i, I don't watch her no i haven't seen it it is it is so funky and pretty and bright but the the poem on it is just beautiful I'll have and you yeah and so i thought oh i never really looked at her i have heard turkeys yeah. but i haven't ever looked at a lot of her designs and yeah. really into birds and i do like birds um but this was just really it's like almost like a uh you know how satsuma streets always very bright right, I mean, right. Patterns seem to be very bright. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and I thought, oh, those would be really cheery to work on. Yeah, I'll have to look for it. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you do that? No, <laughs> as soon as I get off here, in fact. We need some more things to work on, Jan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kim, thank you. This is Thank you, Jan. That, and I am going to be looking for your floss tube videos. Okay. Okay. And whenever you get started, you let me know, and I will let everybody else know. Thank you so much some point I'll get to Seattle and we'll get to meet in person. You have got the best reason in the world to come to Seattle if you've got family up here now. I have a, a not so little boy up there now so. Yeah yeah that that would be fun for sure for yeah. sure and thank you for everything you do for Floss Tube oh. and all of you guys. I mean it really is there are days that I just sit on Saturday and just watch Floss Tube while I'm stitching yeah. it's just because yeah. it is a positive thing right. It, is, and it makes you happy. And you, know, you have the, the connection with everybody in the community. Yeah, you totally yeah. understand them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank, thank you, Kim. 